Hello everyone, Generation Y Conservative here, and today I'm going to be talking about social media and how it's going to shape the future of politics as we know it. If this election in the primary season alone has taught us anything, it's that there's a power in social media and the power of outside influence from DC. Obviously right now Donald Trump is in the lead and he's done it without getting the major funding and backing of big organizations and the party itself. So how has he done that? A lot of it has to do with the gathering on social media with all of his followers and them sharing all of his information. For the past couple years, I have been looking at social media as a tool for things like this. I have a social media marketing background and I've always found it fascinating that we haven't seen more of an influence from social media being used as a tool for elections. Right now, Donald Trump is using social media to connect with people across the country and have them connect with even more people to spread his message. And one of the things that he's spreading, especially with the youth of America, is what the Clintons had done in their past in the 90s when President Bill Clinton was in office with all the scandals, criminal behavior, and him cheating on his wife Hillary during that time because the people that are getting into voting right now that are college age weren't even born at that point in time when he was in office and even some of the youth were so young at that point in time that they wouldn't remember it anyway but he's using the tools of the younger generation which is social media to reach out and grab the attention of the the youth of America. But Donald Trump isn't the only one. One of the oldest people in the campaigns right now is Bernie Sanders. And even though he's losing because of a failed system with superdelegates, he's also using social media to gain more of a reach with his audience and his voters. So let's talk about the future of social media and how it's going to play an important role in future elections and why I think it's such an amazing thing that is has this great potential. In order to run for president, you need a lot of money. And that only comes from the old ways that were set up. Now, in this case with Donald Trump, he's actually paying for it himself because he is a millionaire, a billionaire, whatever he is. So he has that money to get started. But what about another outsider or any other outsiders that are coming into the equation in the future? And how would they get money? They can actually use tools like social media, Facebook, Twitter, and anything else that comes out to gain that audience and ask for money viral. To go viral is to gain the attention quickly of a lot of people. And that's what it's going to take in the future for someone to come into the social media realm, make a name for themselves, and run for president. If, and this is all depending on time, someone can gain traction with their name and use social media to go viral with their own political campaign at least a year in advance, probably two years in advance, to start off with uh, using social media as it is right now. But using one or two years in advance to get their name out before an election and ask for money that way, we may be looking at a time when just regular people can gain the traction of putting out $40,000 to enter the race for president. I believe one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why these primaries are so spread out is because back in the day you had to travel across the country and stop at each state and go to different towns in those states to meet with the people and get your name out there. But we're hearing the same speeches over and over again from all the candidates that have been in the primary process because we're so connected. We have video now. We have the internet with um, all the social media. And you're seeing the same speech patterns over and over again with everything that they're saying. But that's the advantage of social media now. We may be able to pull these primaries closer together, hopefully in the future, because we can use social media to reach out to everyone and someone with a little bit of money may not even need to travel to the United States to get their name out there because if they can go viral enough, they can get their message out by making YouTube videos and sharing them on Facebook and Twitter. And that can spread out the message. It could go topic by topic uh, through the key issues like the economy, war, um, foreign trade, immigration in this case, or they can touch on the social issues as well. And this is a great opportunity to use that social media platform or platforms to go out there and gain your audience. This could be a really interesting time to see someone like that in a future election cycle end up on the debate stage with all these other people that had the backing of the establishment organizations, the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, 
I'm still waiting to see the Libertarian Party be invited to the stage for the main debate in the general election between the Democrats and Republicans. But if we can have someone completely from the outside, an everyday Joe engineer from somewhere, run using social media and gain that kind of traction because everyone on both sides are so pissed off at the establishments that he may have a chance, or she may have a chance, we're looking at a brand new day in how we're going to move forward with this. But you know what? I'm also interested in your thoughts and how we can use social media in the future to shape the course for primary elections and general elections. I know from a marketing background, I'm excited about the possibilities, but maybe there's some other things that I haven't mentioned. A GoFundMe page to run for president. That's one way that they can start that campaign. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say as well in the comments below on how you think that social media could play a part in future election cycles. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video with me today. If you're interested, you can click over here to subscribe to my channel, or you can click up here to see my last video, which was a hot topic, which I'm going to do more of in a series uh, called Abortion. And we go over uh, where and how I ended up uh, as a pro-life person and my stance on that. It's a really interesting story. It's very personal and it gives you the opportunity to listen to a story where I'm not trying to force my ideology on you, but it may open your eyes in, in cases to um, the 1% of that 50 million plus abortions that have happened that are due to rape, incest, and uh, the women's health issue, uh, the mother's health issue. So I hope you check that out as well. Uh, and until next time, I'm the Generation Y Conservative. I'll catch you later.